In this activity, we are going to divide fractions without using tricks. In fact, we're not even going to give students a procedure, but we're going to let them think about what's going on with real world context of baking. So the first thing we want students to do is to color in these figures to represent what's going on. So we have one cup and then they'll shade in to show half a cup and one fourth a cup and then one eighth of a cup. And along the way, we wanna be sure students are thinking about how they are splitting these up to be sure they represent the right amount. But then they can use these to make comparisons. It takes eight of these one eighth cups to fill up one cup. That first step of shading the fractions, that is a way to get students thinking about what each of these fractions represent. It's going to provide them with a visual to refer to. It may even be an opportunity to clear up some misconceptions before we get into the activity. Okay, so I'm gonna set these here as a visual reminder of each of the amounts, and then we'll talk about each baker. So baker A only has one eighth a cup. How can the one eighth cup be used to measure these different amounts? So here is the amount that this baker can measure in his cup. And so we're gonna think about how do we use that to get these different quantities? Okay, so if we want two cups of flour, how can we just use this one eighth amount and get two cups of flour? Now you may be thinking about the operation, but think about it from a student standpoint. They are just thinking, what do I do to get my two cups of flour? How many times am I gonna to have to fill up one eighth a cup? And they can use this visual right here to see. So let's sketch it out. To fill up one cup, we're gonna to have to use our eighth a cup eight times, and then another eight times to fill up the second cup. So it takes 16 of our eighth cups to make two cups of flour. Okay, now let's try one half a cup. How do we get half a cup of sugar using only the one eighth cup measurement? How many times do we need to fill up our eighth cup in order to get half a cup? So we can see it with the visuals. I'm gonna sketch it here. To get a half cup, we're gonna need one, two, three, four of our eighth cups. And then the last one here, to get one eighth cup of cocoa powder, how many times should we fill up our one eighth cup? I'll draw the visual here to show what we're thinking again. It's gonna take one of our one eighth cups to get one eighth a cup of cocoa. Now for a student just learning to divide, this is not supposed to be quick or easy. This is supposed to require them to think about each question, but to make sense of what they're doing. So let's keep going. Okay, Baker B only has the one fourth cup. So how can the one fourth cup be used to measure these different amounts? So we'll get our visual ready so we can think about each one. And the first thing we're gonna think about is trying to get two cups of flour using only the one fourth cup for measuring out each amount. So how many times do I need to fill up my one fourth cup? We can count here. We can also draw this visual to see what we need. I'll need to fill it up four times to get one cup and then another four times to get my second cup for a total of eight times. Okay, and then we're gonna use our one fourth cup to try to measure one half a cup of sugar. So we're looking at our visuals here. And let's note too the type of division. This is measurement division or repeated subtraction. So we are subtracting this one fourth over and over until we get our amount. Students might be able to pick up on that. It's not necessary that they know the exact type of division we're doing, but that is important for the teacher to recognize when we are trying to decide how to show it. So we can see with this visual here, it's going to take two of our one fourth cups to get our half cup. And then we'll look at this one where it gets a little tricky. Now we need one eighth a cup, but we only have a one fourth cup measurement. So is it even possible to measure an eighth a cup of cocoa powder? That might be tricky for students to think about. How can I get a smaller amount? How do I need to fill up my one fourth cup when I only need an eighth? So let's draw this visual to help us think through it. If we have a fourth a cup, but we only need an eighth, what we're doing is filling up one half of our one fourth cup. 
Here's the one fourth cup, and we only need half of that. So our answer here is one half. Now, I do not expect this question, this part right here, to go fast at all. This is something for students to really discuss, think about, make sense. But we are not giving them a trick or procedure to just get an answer. We want the answer to make sense to them. If you were really baking, could you use your one-fourth cup if you only needed an eighth a cup? And you could. All right, let's see what Baker C is doing. Baker C has the one-half cup. And let's see how they can get these different amounts. How many times do we need to fill up our one half cup in order to get two cups of flour? We can see it here with the visual or we can draw our own visual here and count how many times, but we're gonna need to fill up the one half cup four times. And now for a half a cup, not too tricky. How many times do we fill up half a cup to get half a cup? Well, that's one. And now we need to use our one half cup to get one eighth a cup of cocoa powder. So again, we're dividing a fraction by a fraction. And this is beyond what most fifth graders or most students who are just starting to divide fractions, this question is really beyond what they need to know. But the neat thing about when students make sense of the math, they can usually go beyond what we are expecting because they're thinking. They're figuring out things. So if this is not perfect, we don't have to stress about it. But if students are making sense of this along the way, I think they will surprise us a lot of the times and come up with the correct answer. Okay, so we see with this visual here, we only need an eighth. So what portion of our cup needs to get filled up? One fourth. Now that's pretty tricky. And when we're using just an algorithm, sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense. But when we are looking at this context here, we can make sense of it. Here's what I have. I have a half a cup, but I only need an eighth. So how do I fill up this one half cup to just get an eighth? Well, I need to fill it up one fourth of the way. Students might even need to cut this up or draw on it. That's fine. They might need extra copies of this. Um, but letting them draw and cut and make visuals, that is them thinking and making sense of what's going on. So from here, once students have had time to work through this, hopefully giving them time to discuss with partners or groups and really think about what answer is the most appropriate in this context, once they've had time to do all that, we could go back and then show them that we were dividing. This far, they may not have even thought about what operation they're doing, and that's okay. But now we could go back and represent each of these by writing out the division sentence for them. We could show what happens in each scenario and what the solution ends up being. We still don't need to skip to a trick or procedure or anything like that right now, but we could show them when you have two divided by one eighth, the answer is 16. And they can think about why that makes sense. If we subtract 1 8 from 2, how many times will we need to subtract it until we're down to 0? And then we can continue from there. 1 half divided by 1 8 is 4, and 1 8 divided by 1 8 is 1. And we can write these for each of these, really stopping to think about, does that make sense with the context? And maybe you notice some patterns here, and maybe students will pick up on this. Notice what's going on as we increase the size of the cup we're working with. How many times we filled it decreased. And we can compare each column here and pick up on some nice patterns. I think that's something that students might see or may not, but it could be a good discussion point as to why that happens. Okay, I hope that fraction activity gave you an idea about how context really helps students make sense of the math. In that activity, students can figure out division problems with fractions using what they know, using the pictures, making sense of it all, and not relying on a trick like keep, change, flip. If you take a look at the standards for many places, in fifth grade, students are dividing fractions, but one of the numbers is a whole number and one is a unit fraction. 
that's like the example we did where we had a two divided by one half. In that case, students can represent those with models, with pictures, with manipulatives. They do not need a trick at all. So students should have a year of exposure to thinking about these basic division problems with fractions. We shouldn't be jumping right into really complicated fraction division. We should start with something that students can think about. If we start right from the beginning and give them a trick to use, they lose that opportunity to make sense of what's happening. Students are very capable of figuring out fraction division if given the right context, the right tools, the right visuals. So I hope you will try this out with your students. Let them really experience what it means to divide with fractions. Let them see that the math does make sense.